breadsticks and crabs. Hey everybody. Well, I guess we should probably start with questions because I don't have really much to say. So, does anybody have any questions? Go ahead. Kind of the obvious question is, you know, what's next for you after using the title? You know, I've been... Won it in July, right? How do, I, how do I win a match with a broken hand, have the match of my life, on top of the mountain, and I walk into the G1, shoot the bed in the G1, and then this is the next big thing I do since the G1. And what I do tonight, I talked a big game. I talked a lot of crap about Cody Rhodes. And then what did he do? He out-wrestled me. He rolled me up. You plan for a guy, you think he's one way, and then he outsmarts you, and he beats you with a wrestling move. So what's next for me? I don't know. I know I'll be at, uh, what's the next King of Pro Wrestling? I'll be there. I'm sure I won't be doing much because I don't have a title and I got nothing to fight for. I don't, I don't know what's next for me. And after that, there's a super junior tour. Unless I lose a bunch of LBs and try to be a junior, I don't, I don't think I'll be on that. And then what, tag league? So I guess tag league, I don't know. Maybe I'm a tag team wrestler. I don't know, because I'm not the US champion. So I don't know what's next. Juice, two questions. What can you learn from this, and how much did the G1 take out of you? Well, we'll do the first one first, because I think that one, well, the, you know, the G, I was already kind of like running on, I felt like, you know, when your iPhone says 20%, <laughs> that's how I felt like I was walking into the G1. You know, I'll be honest, you know, you break a little bitty bone in your hand. It was just a small bone. It was just a soft bone, but, you know, they'll still take you know, eight to 12 weeks to handle or to heal if you're not wrestling. But I wrestle, I'm a wrestler, that's what I do. So if I can walk, I'm gonna do the G1 every year. You know, cause what, Tanahashi, how many is it? I don't wanna get off, you know how I can get. I don't wanna go off on a thing, but I wanna be like, I got like Tanahashi, he's done 18 of these. He's tore about every muscle. And, you know, he's got arthritis in every single one of his knees and he's on every one. So I'm not gonna let a broken, I wasn't gonna let a broken hand stop me. But even with that being said, it's in your mind. You're thinking about it. You're thinking about a broken hand. You're trying to have a good match. You're trying to beat the best. Those are the best 19 wrestlers in the world. The best heavyweight wrestlers, I'll clarify. And then me, you know, you, 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 I have to have two good hands. I have to have all my bones, all my muscles. I have to be in the great, best shape to hang with these guys. Who's out there right now? Ishii, Okada, Kenny, and Ibushi? All three out of four of them were in my block. And I, and I, got, I got a hand, a broken hand to worry about. Believe it or not, I somehow, as that went on, I kind of came out of it. I kind of, towards the end, I was feeling better. But, it, you know, I went in already, you know, two feet in quicksand. So, I don't know. It took a lot out of me. It was the worst. It was a terrible G1 performance. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm on the bubble next year to be in it. And what can I learn from this match? I got to talk. I got to quit talking so much smack. You know what I mean? I love that. You know, I am arrogant. I am brash. I am flamboyant. I like to talk shit. All right, I'm sorry I said S-H-I-T. I know we're trying to clean up the language around here. I like to talk smack, you know. And so does Cody, but I, I fell right into Cody. Fell right into him. I, you think you know Cody. You think you know he's gonna have Brandy out there. He's gonna do the Macho Man, Miss Elizabeth thing. And he does, and what's he do? He beats you with a roll up. So I, and I'm still going to the people. I'm still worried about these people. I'm still ready to go through the curtain wondering, are they gonna like me? Are they? Are, I always wonder that. Are they gonna like me? Anywhere I wrestle. And you know what? No offense to every single wrestling fan out there, but I shouldn't give a damn what anyone thinks. I gotta win. I gotta win. And if I'm worried about looking to the people and wondering, oh, if they like me, I'm gonna get beat with roll-ups all day. What have the last few months been since uh, the July San Francisco show? What have they been for your career? What has it been like? Well, I think more eyes were on me after that. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, I started getting a lot of text messages from a lot of different people in a lot, a lot of different uh, places in the world. And uh, a lot of questions were asked. Uh, and I think I opened up some eyes with all. Uh, all companies, all wrestling 
people everywhere maybe now know who I am, and they should. But yeah, it's been I don't know. We you win a title, you're on top of the mountain, and then and for your first defense, how many times that happened in New Japan? How many times if, if your first match you defend it, you lose? And I lost to a guy that I told everybody that I was better than, that I was going to out wrestle, that I was going to prove that I was different. What was the difference between Wrestle Kingdom? What was it, 11? Does anybody know what was that, 11? Wrestle Kingdom 11? And tonight here, how many? Two, two three years later? What was, the, what was the difference? Nothing. There was no difference. Okay? I lost to a crossroads or whatever it's called then. And today, I lost to a small package. So, what's the difference? Nothing. I don't know. I can't remember. Yes, I'm sorry. What's that? Between the two events, when, from July until now. Uh, what would you would you say anything has changed as far as uh, the landscape or uh, as far as expanding or I think it's been I think it's been similar. We came we came back here. I don't know. I I'm not the right guy to ask. There's a lot smarter people than me to ask that question to. But I feel like you go you do a small room where everybody's standing on the ground twice in two nights. You sell it out twice. You go to San Fran, you do very well there. Or no, you, I'm sorry, you go to Long, you go, to, you come here, then you go to San Fran, then you come back here. I don't know. To me, that might be, is that a step in the right direction? I don't know. But I want to see this grow, and I want to see it go. No offense to Long Beach, no offense to California, but man, there's New York City out there, and I know where we're going. There's Chicago out there. There's Miami. There's Houston. There's pro wrestling fans all over our country and all over Europe. And New Japan, pro wrestling fans all over. So let's get our asses out of California. And let's grow. And let's really grow this mother. I'm doing good with this, with this effort thing. I really am, and I hope people are paying attention. You talk about well, you. The, you talk about the MSG card. Uh, yeah. When you go there, do you hope to be on the card? Do you hope to be fighting for the U.S. Championship on there? Oh, uh, dude, I hope to be on that. But first and foremost, I hope to be on that card. But obviously, yeah, you want to be in a big singles match fighting for a, a big championship. The U.S. Championship would be great. But uh, as of right now, am I on that card? I don't know. What would you say? I don't know what I would say. We'll see. I know I got to start turning this around. You know, love balloon. You know, there's it's ROH and it's New Japan. How many wrestlers is that? Fifty. Everybody's gonna be want to be on that. It's Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena in the world, and it's sold out. So. Yeah, I'm going to be on it. Am I going to be on it? I don't know. I don't so I think you are going to be on it, but how much does this loss sting tonight compared to other losses in your career, considering it was your first major title and you lost it on your first defense? Yeah. You know, it sucks because I was kind of known for a while to, to uh, be a loser. It's kind of like, I was a loser. I lost. And every once in a while I won. I surprised people. And then I won a championship. And I'll be honest, I got a little too big for my bridges. I put my foot in my mouth and I talked a lot of crap. And I thought, or maybe I wished myself into, I acted like I was better. Maybe I wasn't. Maybe my head got a little bigger, but I don't know if my wrestling ability got any better. Has so your, it really stings. Has your respect increased or decreased for Cody Rhodes after tonight and some of the antics he and Brandy pulled? It, it has increased. It has. I've always respected Cody. And I know I, I say, you know, I say a lot of, you know, me and Cody came from two different places in the world. And I, and I said something a couple days ago that I actually want to clarify right now. I said that I was the American dream. And I, and I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, but I am going to say this because I want to apologize to the Rhodes family. I want to apologize to anybody that I offended. I did not mean that I was the American dream Dusty Rhodes. I did not mean that. There was only one American dream Dusty Rhodes. There will always ever be one American dream Dusty Rhodes. I know that. I loved that guy so much and I respected him so much. I did not mean any disrespect to anyone when I said what I should have said, what I meant was I am living my American dream. It is the American dream for me to get here. My version of that, I am not Dusty Rhodes, nor am I trying to be, but I looked up to him and if, it, if a little bit of him is rubbed off to me, I'm better for it. So I want to apologize, especially to Dustin Rhodes because I don't know if he took offense to that, but somebody told me that he might have so. I want to apologize. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you.